The Eagles top brass met with the media yesterday to talk about the upcoming draft and their philosophy on both players and unexpected draft scenarios. But you got to hear what Howie Roseman said about a potential trade up in the first round, which was later all but confirmed this morning by ESPN's Adam Schefter. And Devontae Smith tried yet again yesterday to defend A.J. Brown and rip anybody who thinks there's drama in the Eagles wide receiver room. I'm Thomas Mott. This is the Thomas Mott Show. So the Eagles had two big press conferences yesterday, and although Howie and Nick's joint meeting with the media definitely had more meat to it, I really couldn't help but love Devontae Smith going first, talking about his brand new contract situation, and really telling the Philadelphia press how great it is to be an Eagle, how great it is to play for this city, and how Kellen Moore's offense, he hasn't learned it quite yet, but he's definitely excited to dive into it. Although if you didn't watch the entire press conference, at kind of the end of the 12 minutes, there was a Philadelphia reporter basically asking Devontae Smith about, hey, how are you guys going to share the football? You and A.J. Brown, two number ones, A.J. Brown causes a lot of drama. What do you have to say about that, Devontae Smith? Uh, like I said, two guys that understand um, one another. Um, I think the relationship that we have has made us be able to, you know, take take the games where we don't have the big games um, and the other one does, be able to just, you know, be happy for each other. Um, you know, it's never a time that we're sitting up there, you know, we're, we're mad at each other or mad at anyone about not getting targets. But, um, I mean, let's be realistic. Everybody wants to – be a, you know, a part of the game. Everybody wants to make that big play. And um, you should be happy that you have a guy like that because um, you have a lot of guys that when that time come, they'll shy away from the moment. You have a guy like him, you have a guy like me that we're never going to shy away from the moment. When that moment comes, we always want to be a part of it. And I think that's the good thing about it. And, you know, everybody wants to spin it this way and that way. But, I mean, you have two guys who, who want to be the alpha. And I feel like that's a good thing. And you have two guys that are happy for each other. Uh, I mean, me and AJ, we talk every day. We call each other every day. We make sure that we talk on the phone every day, whether it's football, it's life. Um, you know, last night we had the kids on the phone talking, you know, babies just sitting there doing a the baby talk. Uh, so, you know, just us being real close um, outside of football, I mean, Football is one thing, but I think just the relationship off the field with each other. It really doesn't matter how many times AJ or Devontae or even Jalen have to tell the media. They just don't seem to care or want to listen. These two guys are best friends. They were FaceTiming yesterday with both of their babies just hanging out, just talking about life, talking about football. There has been and is no drama surrounding who's going to get more targets, who's getting more touches. These two really, in terms of each other, could not care less. And sure, if you want to point out the few silent altercations last season when, surely, two stars were probably more upset at the horrific play calling than really anything else? Well, Smitty gave you the answer to that question too. Philadelphia has two alpha receivers who both want to eat, and with that alpha mentality will sometimes come a little bit of outbursts. But for the very few of you guys in my comment section, and I mean few, but they're still there, who want A.J. Brown out of town, who think A.J. Brown is too dramatic, and that there can't be two number one receivers in this offensive wide receiver room, would you rather go back to the 2018 receiver room? Would you rather Greg Ward and Travis Fulgham be your two top targets? I mean, come on, seriously, you can have a little bit of friction when the diamonds that are created because of it are two of the best receivers in the league. And while I know a lot of you guys hate listening to Nick Sirianni ramble at the podium, he was asked about the dynamic of having two star wide receivers and did give his unique head coaching perspective on what it's like to have both AJ and Smitty. I think at the end of the day, the problem, uh, any problem that would happen is because, um, you know, there would be jealousy between one, but these guys, these two guys love each other. Like, I, I hate to say it, like, I mean, th these guys are connected. These two guys have a, a great relationship, and that's what you're trying to create for your entire entire football team, and it's a great example. Like, I feel like I'm able to use them a lot as far as the example of how teammates respond to each other. Like, Devontae is genuinely happy when AJ has a good game, and AJ is genuinely happy when Devontae has a good game, and they help each other get better throughout the week. Now, shortly before the man of the offseason, Howie Roseman took the podium for his joint press conference with Nick Sirianni, the Eagles' NFC East rival, the Dallas Cowboys, made yet another signing in their all-in offseason. Wow, big one here. Bringing the total money spent on both free agents and extensions between the Dallas Cowboys and the Eagles to $49 million for the Birds and $11 million for Jerry's boys. Howie, of course, was asked about spending big money on free agents and extensions, and he gave all the credit to one man in particular. Well, I think first, uh, a tremendous amount of credit uh, goes to Jeffrey Lurie, you know, and allowing us to be aggressive and um, do these contracts early. And uh, really, when you, you're able to do that and able to be in a position to lock down the caliber of players that we think we've locked down over the last couple of weeks, it really uh, gives you tremendous flexibility as you build your team going forward. 
Um, you know, it's it's a it's a great success story for us to be able to draft guys and sign them to extensions. I think it's a great message to our team that if you come here and you do the right thing, you don't have to leave. Now, the one move that everyone seemingly criticized Howie for this offseason was, of course, trading with Hassan Reddick to the Jets for a far-in-the-future third-round draft pick. But during yesterday's presser, Roseman spoke for the very first time about getting rid of his star pass rusher, and his answer was pretty interesting. Great player. You know, Hassan had a great two years in Philadelphia, obviously. You know, Camden kid, um, played at Temple. Couldn't have been more excited to sign him. So it's bittersweet um, to lose a player and a person like that, um, you know, as the offseason went along and uh, we we added uh, Bryce, who we're incredibly excited about, brought back Josh, trapped to Nolan Smith in the first round. BG came back. We have some young guys at that position who we're excited to develop, um, you know, and, and through the conversations with the Jets, um, we felt like, uh, it was a win-win situation, but always hard to get rid of uh, players and people like Hassan. Now, this was a 32-minute press conference, and so if you didn't watch the entire thing, I totally get it. But my job is to watch the whole thing, and there was a little moment about halfway through where Howie's kind of asked about not only trades, but the draft process. And his answer here is pretty funny, but it's pretty revealing as well. Part of this time of year, and how much do you get into the, the trading part of it? You've obviously made tons of trades. and I like the trades. trades. I like the trades. Um, <laughs> I do. You know, th this this is fun. You know, I, I think that for, from my perspective, the ability for us um, to really put our imprint on the football team, to be able to bring guys in, um, <laughs> we're not going to lose any games. So certainly that's not going to spoil the party for us. Now, no, that doesn't guarantee a trade up or trade down in the draft. But you got to remember, each of the past two seasons, the Eagles have traded up in the first round to go get players that they had circled on their big board for months in advance. Leading Bleacher Report to throw out a mock trade yesterday that would vault the Eagles to number nine overall and give Chicago number 22, number 53, a 2024 fifth, and a 2025 third. Now, that right there is statistically a very fair trade when you go ahead and average all the total cost of each draft pick together, meaning Philadelphia could potentially go up to number nine and not have to give up even two of their second-round draft picks this year, just be one, and that would give you not only a very high draft pick to go get someone that you wanted, but still give you plenty of ammo on the later rounds of the draft. And at nine, you could take, I don't know, Quinion Mitchell. How about the Toledo superstar cornerback, who honestly would be very hard to pass up on if you were inside the top ten, but with the affirmation of Son Reddick no longer on this team, a trade up to nine could really be for pass rusher, and you guys know I love Jared Verse. I've talked about him as being pro-ready for many, many weeks here on this channel, but if you're inside the top 10, Alabama's Dallas Turner cannot be forgotten. Like, I don't talk about Turner a lot, mainly because he is going to be a top 10 draft pick, and so Philadelphia being right now at number 22 means you probably can't get him, but again, if you find yourself way up in 9, 10, 11, 12 pick range, would the best pass rusher in the draft not be a top target for Howie and the Birds? Oh, if you don't want to take my word for it or a mock Bleacher Report trade for the Eagles moving up, how about ESPN's Adam Schefter on 97.5 The Fanatic this morning giving you his best guess on the Eagles' plans for night one? To me, what, what they're always looking to do at this time of the year is they're always looking to figure out a way to go up, you know, a few slots in the draft to go get the guy that they really want to make sure that he's there, whoever that may be. That's where I think they'll wind up doing again, like, what number are they, 22? 22, 50, 53. Right, so all of a sudden 22 turns into, I'm making this up, 19, and they get the guy they wanted, right, rather than sweating it out to 20. Like, that, they've done that consistently in multiple reaching years. My best guess is Philadelphia has about eight prospects inside the first round that they are absolutely in love with. If they're there, Philadelphia will probably take him. I wrote them down. I think it's Mitchell, Fatanu, Verse, Turner, Arnold, Wiggins, Murphy, and DeGene. That's eight, and that's my best guess on who they really like. But all those players were recently mocked to go ahead of the Eagles in the usual pretty accurate Peter Schrager mock draft, which tells me that a trade-up is probably what has to happen if they want to secure any of those guys. And I know how he didn't come out and say, hey, we are trading up in the first round. But the signs continued to kind of be there, and yesterday's press conference made it really plain to me that I'm going to expect to move up, whether it's a couple of draft picks to maybe Seattle at 16, or it's a bunch of draft picks all the way up to 9 and taking with the Chicago Bears second-round pick. Either way, the Eagles trade-up seems to be very, very likely. Now, Josh Davis and I are going to talk about this tonight during our usual Wednesday Link Live, where we're going to talk about the draft, free agency, trades, and everything in between. Make sure you guys hit the red subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you get a pop-up on your cell phone saying, hey, Thomas and Josh are live. That's the best way to go ahead and do it. Again, the NFL draft, we're getting close to one week away. We're about a week and a couple of days away. This is your one-stop shop for everything happening in the next couple of days and weeks. I'm Thomas Mott. This has been the Thomas Mott Show.